Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Live Lounge. My name is Rachel, and I'm a product manager here at Oxford Nanopore. Yesterday, we went through our end-to-end -end sample to answer pipeline for human genomics, focusing on the power of the Promethion flow cell and the new Epitome Labs human variation workflow. Today, I'd like to, dis to focus on what's coming in terms of library preparation, devices, and new developments. Everyone knows that a well-prepped library is important for Nanopore sequencing. As such, I want to take some time to talk about what's new with Voltrex, our portable device for automated library preparation. For this, I want to invite up Beth Lodge, our senior lead on Voltrex chemistry, to the stage. Welcome, Beth. Thank you, Rachel, for the introduction. Uh, so, as Rachel said, I'm here to talk about Voltrax. So, Voltrax is our automated sample preparation device, which we can see up on the screen. So, that's showing what Voltrax is. So, Voltrax, you clip your cartridge into the device, load up your samples and reagents as the software tells you, press go, and then you're ready to go. You can go away, do whatever you want whilst Voltrax does all the hard work for you, and you can come back at the end with your library ready to load onto a flow cell, Promethion, anything you wish. So one of the things you'll notice about Voltrax is that it can fit in the palm of your hand. Uh, and also, if I had pockets, it might fit in those as well. Um, but for now, I'll settle with it, sort of just taking up less space on the bench. Um, but it also means that you can sort of take it away for any field experiments you want to do. Further benefit is the sustainability of it. So because you only have to load up the cartridge once, the number of pipette tips you use, the number of tubes, f and all that sort of stuff is significantly reduced. So your plasticware consumption is going to be right down. Here we have the protocol selector page from our software. And this shows you the protocols which are currently available. So I'm just going to talk through a little, some of those now. Uh, we have two sort of QC checks. One checks the cartridge, one checks the device, just to make sure all the electrics are working as they should be. We have our Voltrax sequencing kit, the VSK. That was the first protocol we released. Uh, so that's a fragmentation-based me method, uh, which also has a bead-based cleanup in it. Um, and that sort of gives you really nice high throughput and long read lengths. So we've tested that with the Zymo high molecular weight community. And we get an N50 of about 19 KB. But we have reads going all the way up to 100 KB. And with that, we get about 14 gig in 24 hours of sequencing on a min-iron flow cell on the gridiron. So we get that high throughput with the long read lengths. Just today, we've released the Voltrax multiplexing kit, which is a 10-sample version of that kit. So that has a two-week lead time on the store at the moment, but that'll do up to 10 samples. Then we have our two PCR protocols. So as Rosemary mentioned yesterday, the V2B device and the blue cartridge were released earlier this year, and they've been really optimized for PCR performance. So we have our PTC, which is our PCR tiling coronavirus prep, takes your input coronavirus RNA, reverse transcribes it, and PCRs it. So that's based on the midnight prep. And then we have our VPS, which is expanded from that. And that'll allow you to put in your own DNA or RNA, your own primers, and it'll allow you to set the temperatures and times of that PCR you want. So one of the things that Voltrax does is it have, has this active feedback when you're loading your reagents in your sample. So it can detect how much you're loading. So as you start loading, that'll be blue. And that shows you that you need to keep going. You've not got enough fluid on the cartridge yet. Keep going. When you hit green, we're good. That's where you want to be, golden spot. So don't do anything, just take your perspective out. If you load a little bit too much, it'll turn orange to give you a bit of a warning to be like, whoa, slow down, don't load anymore. If for some reason you ignore it and decide that you know better uh, and keep loading, then it will tell you that you've reached a limit, it'll turn red, game over. So don't hit red. <laughs> this is our VMK sample sh input sheet, so you can see You've got the sample number there, and it allows you to select anywhere between two and 10 samples. And then you can have the sample ID, which auto populates with the date, the kit name, and also the cartridge and device ID. And then you can choose which barcode you're adding and which sample corresponds to that. When you click Continue and you've loaded all your reagents, it'll come to this screen, 
And so you can see at the top, we've got a visual representation of what's happening on the cartridge. Um, so that is showing you what all the liquid is doing, where it's going, showing you everything being dispensed out. And it tells you what step you're on. So here, we're on the fragmentation step. And then it'll progress through. And it also gives you an estimated time remaining for that protocol. When we have any heating steps, you get that active graph, which shows you the temperatures of the different peripherals that are being used. So for the heater and the Peltier, it'll tell you what temperature it's at. So this graph here is showing a two-step PCR. So you can see it goes up to 92 degrees and then comes back down. Um, this has been sped up because you know, I'm not going to make you sit there and watch as it just slowly increases in time. So, but it will adjust as you go through and get more cycles. And those will start appearing as it goes through. We do have some other protocols in the works at the moment. Um, so if you would like to know more about those, please come over and chat to us. And also, we're running the Voltrax loading clinic in all of the break times, so you can get some real hands-on experience at loading a Voltrax as well, if you'd like. Thank you very much for listening. I'm going to pass back over to Rachel. Thanks to Beth for updating us on the exciting new Voltrax developments. To continue the theme of sample preparation, I would like to talk about something that will help us unlock new throughput for Oxford Nanopore preps. While I bet we wish we all had octopus arms in the lab, the sad reality is that we don't. Therefore, in order to scale up library preps, we need to think outside the box, or rather inside of it. That's right, I'm talking about library prep automation for nanopore sequencing. To discuss the latest developments, I would like to invite Jade Bartolo, our Automation Solutions Manager, up to the stage. Thank you, Rachel. Hi, everyone. I'm Jade, and I manage the Automation Solutions team. We have made tons of progress this year, and I'm super excited to be sharing it with you all today. Unfortunately, I couldn't fit it all into my five-minute slot, so my team and I have put together a video to give you an idea of what we've done and how we can help you. It makes automating it straightforward and compatible with a range of different liquid handlers. It allows for easy multiplexing, thereby increasing sequencing capacity. And libraries prepared on automated liquid handlers are compatible with all Oxford Nanopore devices from the Tongel to our highest throughput device, the Prometheum. By following automation protocols designed and verified by Oxford Nanopore or automation vendors, you get a robust, simple to use, off the shelf automated method for running our library preparations. We are developing automated methods on a range of liquid handlers to cater for different throughput requirements and budgets. On larger systems, multiplexing and integration to limb systems allows for full traceability, which is necessary for high throughput nanopore sequencing. Automated library preparation increases consistency and minimizes end-to-end -end preparation times. This results in quicker, higher quality, reproducible results, giving you confidence while saving time, cost, and effort. Furthermore, limited hands-on time releases staff for higher value work. Our in-house team can assist in every step of design and setup. If I were choosing an automation platform, developing a new method, or had any other automation question, I would get in touch by going to the automation area of the Nanopore website and clicking Get in Touch. Behind me is the collection of protocols we have developed and are currently working on, which you can also find on our website. Oxford Nanopore has partnered with multiple automation vendors, such as Hamilton, Tekan, Beckman, Agilent, Eppendorf, Opentrons, and others coming up in our roadmap. This is so that we can support all automation needs at every level, ranging from low throughput requirements, which depend on the robustness of automation platforms, to higher throughput integrated systems for population scale sequencing projects. The three main protocols we've been working on across the different workstations are from our life science research tools, the LSK and MLK, single plex and multiplex ligation sequencing protocols, and from the applied market, our midnight SARS-CoV-2 sequencing protocol. In the first column behind me, there is data comparing the manual LSK method to our automated protocol. 
It shows that comparable data is achieved from both methods of preparation, but as expected, there is increased consistency across the automated protocols. In the middle column, there is data from the MLK protocol. It was designed to support high throughput population genomic projects by optimizing for multiplexing and yield. In this method, you would barcode all of your samples and then pull two or three samples into one flow cell depending on your required yield. Barcode balancing is crucial, as you can imagine, for a presentation of each genome, and that was achieved in our method. When verifying our protocols prior to community release, we always test them extensively, and, and we do this in a checkerboard fashion to ensure that there is no cross-contamination. This was especially critical in our midnight protocol, and the results we show here are that all of the negatives were truly negative, and all of the positives were truly positive with no false results. Our in-house automation solutions team can assist you in every step during designing and setting up of automation in your lab. Alongside our in-house development, we also work with vendors and customers to design, develop, and test scripts that can be used as part of your workflow. Additionally, as Rosemary very excitingly um, announced this morning, we're working on the Turbot project for an end-to-end -end sequencing solution. If you would like support picking an automation platform, discussing the development of a method, or have any other question relating to automation, get in touch. We're here to help. Thank you. Thanks to Jade for that overview. We believe that enabling automated library prep will help our customers increase th throughput while decreasing hands-on time, which we all know is extremely valuable in the lab, at least until we can all become Octopi. We can't wait to hear from you and all of our customers in the future about what library prep automation has helped you achieve. Now, let's move on to our latest advances in sequencing devices. I'm sure you're all wondering about the Minion Mark 1D, which you heard about in the tech update yesterday. Well, I'm happy to be able to present the newest device in the Oxford Nanopore lineup. As you can see, the Minion Mark 1D takes advantage of the extremely powerful and capable Apple iPad Pro. Additionally, our custom case incorporates our beloved Minion flow cell, as well as charging functionality, bringing the portable sequencing ability to a whole new level. On the Minion Mark 1D, you'll also in the future see a sleeker and more optimized Minnow that takes advantage of the Apple M1 compute chip and further M series in the future. Furthermore, the Minion Mark 1D also brings base calling on the device, ensuring that you can analyze your data on the go. While this device is still in development, we can't wait until it becomes available for early access during the second half of 2023. To get more information on this product, please stop by the device table when you get a chance. And to round out this peek into our pipeline and talk about another method of hands-off sample prep, I'd like to invite Pedro Ortiz, our associate director of the liquid biopsy platform, up to the stage to talk about the latest developments in that area. Thank you, Rachel. Um, I'll start by reminding everyone of the disclaimer from last night, as this is a follow-up from uh, Lagmal's talk. So as you will have inferred from that talk, this is a significant departure from our current flows architecture. It is very much a vision of where we want to take our technology, and that is out of the lab. Those who follow this space will remember Clive's talk from London Calling earlier in the year, where he um, said that we had decided to flip uh, the problem on his head with respect to the design of our uh, liquid biopsy devices. Um, so instead of trying to design a device that integrates our existing library PEP chemistry, we decided to design the simplest possible device and then develop a chemistry to fit this. Um, and as you heard last night, we have made some very good progress on developing some of the capabilities that will enable this device. Um, so if, uh, if I point you towards the slide, um, what we have here is a nanopore sequencing flow cell that is capable of accepting raw sample as input. Uh, it may look like a min ion flow cell, but it packs quite a few more functionalities and is capable of a number of additional things. So at number one, we have the swab receptacle, which is where the raw sample will be uh, going in. 
Um, and this is a chamber placed directly above the sequencing uh, sensor. Um, and you will see at number two on the bottom image, there is a gel layer, which is a diffusion barrier separating these two volumes. So the volume where the sample goes in and the volume uh, where the sequencing chemistry is placed, um, which takes me to number three, which is there are two of them, actually, you will see there, uh, is a pair of electrodes uh, that is additional to our current, uh, to our current layout. Um, and these electrodes will be used to establish a potential across uh, that gel, uh, and we will be able to bring the strand electrophoretically from the um, sample input chamber into the sequencing chamber where the enzopore uh, that uh, Lagmal described last night will be waiting uh, to grab the strand and then put it in the pore so, we can, uh, so you can sequence it. Uh, at number four, you'll see that there is a PCB with a battery uh, at the back of the flow cell instead of what it currently is, uh, the volume uh, dedicated for waste. Uh, and this is a circuit that will power this electrophoretic process, uh, and that's why it includes a battery. Um, and number five, we have uh, a placeholder structure for now, but this will be a check valve that will be able to segregate the volume between the yellow channel on the top, as you can see there, from the volume in the sequencing chamber, and this al will allow us to store reagents in the flow cell, as these two volumes won't be able to mix due to the presence of this, uh, of this valve. Um, and finally, uh, there is an integrated pump, uh, and it's a finger-actuated pump that the user will be able to operate to then bring the stored reagents in the channel into the sequencing chamber and then carry on the, um, their experiment. So if we move to the little camera here, uh, you will be able to see the device. You'll see the, that there is quite a difference in the, in the tracking. So we open it there. The, the swab receptacle will contain the elution buffer. So all the user will have to do is swab whatever surface or mucus they want to gather the sample from, carefully insert the tip of the swab into the receptacle, break, twist slightly, close. There's a switch that will uh, turn on the electric field that does the electrophoresis. Uh, so you get that going. And after a few minutes, a while, uh, you will be able to then just go to Mino, press go, and that is what starts the, what starts the sequencing run. Um, so that is pretty much it. This is how simple we want to make uh, the use of our technology. Uh, so hopefully I will have uh, offered you a glimpse into uh, what the future can look like. Uh, and uh, we now have enough data that gives us confidence to know that th this is a path that we can very definitely uh, travel. So with that, I'll pass the stage back on to Rachel. So thank you very much for your attention.